Okay, this patch is Quarkstream 2.2. Uh, it's kind of late here, so I can't turn the monitors up too loud, but I'll try and demonstrate it a little bit. Um, what it is is a micro looper uh, that you can randomize in some interesting ways. So right now I have it set up um, to the least random setting. Uh, well, I guess there are other ways to, to de-randomize it. There, there are two modes. There's a chop mode, and you might think of that as like an LFO mode. It just switches on and off. Um, and then if you deactivate that, uh, the recording of the micro loops is determined by a random gate that's clocked by the LFO that controls the chop mode. So um, what that means is it basically flips a coin. And if it hits heads three times in a row, uh, then that loop will be three times as long as the, the clock length. Um, and if it hits heads once and then tails once, it'll sound just like the chop mode. Um, so the unchopped mode is, is more random in terms of length. get shorter and, and longer uh, loops depending on what this control is set to and larger values lead to smaller loops. And this UI button here just shows when one or the other loop is recording. So we get some shorter loops and some longer loops because we're not using chop mode. If we put it in chop mode, everything will be the same length. And in this particular mode, we're getting sort of robot gurgles. Uh, but in either of those modes, you can add an amount of randomness. Um, the randomness will always decrease the clock length. Uh, not increase it. So, you know, it all works in a combination with what mode it's in, what the loop size is, and what the randomness amount is for the, the general size of loops you'll get. Um, Okay, so that's, that controls sort of the size of the loops. There's a control called loop chance that controls how often loops are recorded. So, you know, every time that LFO flips or, or that random gate flips a coin, uh, another uh, probability is being determined, which is whether or not that heads or tails leads to a loop being recorded. And you can set that with the loop chance. And when this UI button is dark, no loop is being recorded. So you can get an idea of how the loop chance is affecting uh, your controls. And because uh, the loops are occurring less often, they last longer, right? Because nothing replaces them. If you want to control how long they last, there's an envelope section over here. This light, when it's off, means that the envelope is active and you have an attack, a sustain, and a decay stage. The sustain stage is actually a hold stage. It's a hold. It's an attack, hold, decay envelope. Um, and so you can set it up so that, you know, the, the loops are obnoxious, or you can do some cool envelope effects. Uh, 
to control, you know, how long they persist or, or if they fade in or not. Um, and you can bypass that as well if you don't want to deal with it. Uh, so the loops can also be frozen. This red light when it's on means that uh, the record buffer is being refreshed. Red means recording. Um, but we can also, if we find like a loop that we want to use as a pad or some sort of like a drone thing. We can capture it um, using the right stop switch. And as long as that lights off, that loop will just keep going and going and going. Um, you can, however, mute it using the envelope control uh, because there's no envelope being triggered. And you can do some cool things by changing the pitch shifting uh, and muting it if you want to play like a drone. Um, I'm going to release that now. Uh, and then there's a reverse chance, um, which basically means any loop uh, can be forward or reverse depending on the setting. Um, one means that it's always reversed. Zero means that it always plays forward. Uh, you can turn on and off random pitch shifting. Um, so when this is off, pitch shifting is off. When it's on, no, did I do that right? Yeah, when it's between uh, random pitch shifting, the, the pitch shifted value is determined uh, between uh, no change, so normal playback, um, minus one octave, plus one octave, minus one fifth, and plus one fifth with a slight uh, disposition toward no change and plus one octave, which I just sort of found were the most pleasing to me. Uh, if you wanted to mess around with those, uh, the values are stored in switches on this page. And then there's a low pass filter um, just to tame some of the, you know, octave up stuff that can get kind of squealy. Um, there's a delay uh, that only affects the, the micro loop side. Um, so you can either use that to, to delay the micro loops themselves, um, create feedback. I usually keep it at, at 100%. Um, and the delay is MIDI clocked and also controlled by tap tempo on the left stomp switch. Um, but if you take the delay mix down, then the, the loops will play immediately after they record. Um, which can lead to some interesting stuff, particularly with larger loop sizes. You get sort of trailing glitches. do a mix where you get the best of both worlds. I'm going to turn this down again a little bit. Uh, and then there's a mix control that controls the mix between the dry signal and the micro loop side. Um, and everything passes through a plate reverb at the output and the plate reverb can be frozen with this middle stop switch. 
when it's frozen a white light will come on because it's icy and you can release it and that's quark stream it can do all sorts of stuff i you know i mean i'm you know if you push the loop size up really fast you get sort of sort of sub audio oscillations um, if you take it down much slower particularly in in chop mode or with chop mode turned off uh, you can get like whole phrases playing back um I'm just going to use the envelope control to mute those um so you know it it covers a lot of different uses um and I, I think it's it's a pretty musical approach especially with this randomness control i added i i did a version two that i just put up um but this is a, a new addition that i think really refines the circuit um and makes it much more adaptable. I, I, you know, I mean, I like it as sort of a happy accident machine, but because you control, you can control how much the clock is randomized. You can, I think, use it in uh, much more musical settings. So that is Quarkstream 2.2. I hope you check it out and enjoy it. Thank you.